Now time to continue our holiday special to look at some of the foreigners who have set up successful business ventures here and have made China their second home. If you are entrepreneur-minded, China might be the place to start a business. But instead of bringing a touch of Western life into the urban Chinese population, Dominic Johnson held got creative. He repackages iconic images of Chinese culture, puts them on t-shirts, and sells them to Chinese customers. Now I got a chance to sit down with him to discuss the journey of this unique Beijing t-shirt brand founded by born and bred British. From an old-fashioned bus stop to cheap play your pages dialect, <coughs> t-shirt designs like this can make you look twice. Founder of Plaster Egg T-shirts, Dominic Johnson Hill, says what he puts on his shirts are images that either control memories of the past. There was the subway ticket in Beijing that was used in Beijing all the way up until 2004. Or give people a hearty laugh. Beijing had a very polite way of telling someone to go away, basically, <laughs> or leave me alone. It's like wherever it's cool, go hang out there. And the idea is so simple. He just wants to spread his own impression and love of Beijing, not just on T-shirts. But also his collection of nostalgic collectibles. So anybody has a name card, they can throw it in the posse. <laughs> Nineteen years ago, Dominic arrived in China as a backpacker. He fell in love with the city and people here, and saw huge business opportunities as the Chinese economy was opening up. The question is, why T-shirts? I remember the very first T-shirt I bought in 1993 was at the Great Wall, and it was a terribly designed T-shirt, and it said, "I climbed the Great Wall." You know, it was ten, twelve years later. I was walking around this Sutong where I live. And I saw a tourist walk past me wearing the same T-shirt that I bought 12 years ago, and I thought, "Wow, there's been no development in T-shirts." And so, as a Westerner, I thought this is an opportunity. I always say that China is really a playground for entrepreneurs. There's opportunity everywhere. In 2006, he opened a spot T-shirt shop in Nanjing, Guangxiang, one of Beijing's most ancient hotels. I was his first employee. He hired five sales girls before me, but none of them were reliable. One of them even took away with all the money in shop. He was my neighbor, so I said yes when he asked for my help. At first,、um, my neighbors thought I was crazy, you know.、Um, but I think with every new idea, people always think that it's not going to succeed. I think a very good sign of a good idea is when people don't like it. I think. And I remember my one neighbor said to me, you know, how are you going to make money in the in the winter if you're selling T-shirts, <laughs> you know? But I think to be an entrepreneur, you have to be courageous. What was the very first design you had on the T-shirt? I climbed the Great Wall T-shirt, and I changed it very simply. I just took a woman in, in a bikini, and I plastered her on top of the design.、Uh, why did I do that? Because、uh, you see a lot of signs around China where they do this type of design. They just you have a shop sign, and on the background is green hills and blue sky, and they just plaster things on the top. So it's just plaster, 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 plaster. It's like a very simple form of design. His first design was actually the least successful, but it was the start of a new journey. This is one of his latest designs, inspired by the stained glass windows in the church, and incorporating with the image of a Chinese hero. Cost me about three hundred U.S. dollars to, to create. The cost for the to, first piece. Yeah,、uh, and I, w- I was selling these for about a thousand two hundred dollars, and then these also became T-shirt designs as well. We take so many things for granted, but now if we look into our lives, there are things that can actually become art. Yeah, I mean the thing is, quite often it takes somebody from outside to see what's beautiful around you. For Dominic, creativity is a second nature. When the business started, he didn't have any money to do marketing and had to go creative by leveraging the local community. He invited the community fan dancing group, all made up of middle-aged local women, to dance in front of his shop to create a buzz. And in terms of customer relations, he also has his own way of handling things. What I do is anyone that complains, I ring them up and I take them out for lunch because I want to know what the problem is. And that's a really good way to get to know your customers. When you've got a customer who has opinions. Those are the people you need to listen to. Have you ever done any study on your major customer group? Are they who are they? Core customer base is made up around 70 to 80 percent are young Chinese. And really, the only way to sustain a brand in China is to have Chinese customers, because the foreigners are very transient. They come and go very quickly. 30 square space shows it all. You see, T-shirts remain the anchor product of Plastered Eight, but the company has gone much further from there. They've invented a lot of new products. For instance, this cute little plastic wallet. Um, exactly the same one as I remember my grandma used to have, and that's where we can see purses,、uh, mirrors, 
poster wall clips, and then up on the wall we see bags, shoes, keychains, notebooks, and even postcards down there. Other than having more diverse products, Classroom Aid has gone online. Besides its own website, it's opened a shop on Tmall, the top e-commerce platform in China, and it is a new challenge for Dominic. How much does that online sell? Well, right now it's only around 15 to 20 percent, but. A year ago, it was 5%. Wow, it's growing fast. It's growing fast, yeah. And um, again, you have to get creative with that. There's a big myth with websites that you can put it up there and the world can get your product. But you need to put it on the high street. In other words, you need people to walk past it. And uh, it's a whole new monster. Um, so I have a whole separate team. And I treat it like a whole new business. It's like a whole new startup. A few alleys away from the shop in a quiet shared courtyard. The office of Pastor 8. Dominic thinks this place is conducive to friendly, creative work. Hello. With eight staff members, including two designers, Plaster A has gone from a family shop to a small company. It purchases materials from nearby provinces and uses three factories in Beijing for production. Dominic and his t-shirt brand are becoming more and more well-known. He's often invited on TV shows. Or to lecture for students. I like what he says on TV. I've been here three times, and today I'm so lucky to meet him. Just when we were in the shop, a group of MBA students from Australia arrived. We're interested in coming in and seeing it because he's got quite an entrepreneurial spirit, and it's also quite an interesting business model about how successful he's been in a, in a market like Beijing. Dominic certainly has a lot to share with these young people. He says it makes him feel good when he knows inspire young people to think creatively. I'm the youngest and newest member of Plaster 8. The old things Dominic collects, some of them were made even before I was born, I'm greatly inspired by them. The unique business idea also inspires others in the creative industry. Ma Chao, a young Chinese who runs his own creative company, shares his thoughts. The future of China's creative industry is to make everyday products creative. So for a company like Plaster 8 that focuses on specific creative products, if it doesn't go big, it can probably become a contract designer under a big franchise brand. But Dominic certainly has his own ideas about the future of the business. I'm not a greedy man, and I don't have aspirations to own a hundred stores. I've always wanted to create a small giant, and so I work very hard at keeping the two physical stores that I have always changing. We're in the creative business, so everything changes. You know, the window displays change, the posters change, the t-shirts change. It's always, always changing. In fact, we have a slogan for our business, which is in a constant state of revolution. But we're a small business, you know? Um, and maybe if I'd opened 100 stores, I might have gone bankrupt by now. How would you introduce yourself to a complete stranger? I would say that I am a really nice bloke. <laughs>